Hey everyone, my name is Jana, but you can call me JJ. Have you ever heard of a meet cute? It's the basis for romantic Hollywood movies, and it's also the inspiration for an Instagram account that has 1.9 million followers. It's when two people meet for the first time under cute or amusing circumstances, and then they go on to have a romantic relationship. Little did I know that my trip to Las Vegas in 2015 was going to be the setting for my meet cute and lead to the most unusual first date of my life. After my marriage fell apart in 2015, I was traveling in New York for work and I ran into an old friend named Scott. Well, even after my business was concluded and I returned to Michigan, Scott and I kept in touch almost every day. One day, he told me he had a work trip scheduled in Las Vegas. He was an agent for a horse transportation company and they were attending the national finals rodeos in an attempt to hire new drivers. So knowing that I had plenty of vacation time saved up and that I could use some time off, Scott invited me to join him out there. Vegas is always a good idea, he'd said. You'll have fun, I promise. Well, I couldn't argue with that, so I booked a plane ticket and headed west. One morning, I met Scott in the open area of the hotel where all Avengers were set up. Knowing that he had to work the booth that day, and I had already told him I was going to visit the Harley shop and check out the strip. So I was just stopping in to say goodbye before I left, but he took me aside. Hey, he says, my boss wants to go to the Harley shop with you. He likes motorcycles too. Do you mind? Of course not. So Scott introduced me to Steve. Being the kind of person that can and will talk to everyone, I had no problem going to the Harley shop with someone I'd just met. So Steve and I jumped in an Uber and headed out. For two hours, we walked around the store talking nonstop as we looked at the clothing and the bikes. I was amazed at how much we had in common and I was thoroughly enjoying our time together. When my stomach started rumbling, I told Steve, I need to get something to eat. So he suggested that we go to the Harley Davidson Cafe. Once we were seated across from each other in this massive booth, the waitress appears to take our order. She of course asks, would you like something to drink? Steve says, Captain and Diet. I said, Jack and Diet. A few minutes later, Steve holds his drink up to the light and peers at it. It is the color of honey. He takes a sip of the drink and grins. I'm going to be real entertaining after this. I took a sip of mine and I mentally agreed. I wasn't sure there was any Diet Coke in it, but oh well, after all, I was on vacation. Five hours later, Steve and I were deep in a conversation that hadn't stopped since we walked into the Harley shop that morning. He was so easy to talk to. I found myself telling him how scared I was that my kids would hate me because of the divorce, and he was so incredibly supportive. He told me about how his son lived in Key West and all the time he'd spent there. Steve challenged me to the Harley Arcade game, and he took it very well when I beat him. We talked about anything and everything and laughed more than I had laughed in years. I found myself gazing at him across the table, and I thought, too bad he lives in Pennsylvania. I could date this guy. The conversation flowed as easily as the drinks until my phone went off with a text from Scott. Hey, we're supposed to be at this dinner. Can you bring Steve back? Feeling no pain by this point, I showed Steve the text and we laughed and laughed. I snapped a selfie of us, our first selfie, and sent it to Scott. The text that went with it said, nope, we're having too much fun. But in some part of my mind, I realized we did need to go back. We said a long goodbye to our waitress who had thoroughly enjoyed spending time with us, often sitting in our booth between customers and joining in our conversation. And then we finally shuffled out the door where I tried to order an Uber. Steve says, let's go to Caesars. Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out why the buttons on my phone keep moving every time I try to touch them. I said, no. I told Scott we were on our way back and finally got the Uber ordered. An hour later, we were sitting across the table from each other, surrounded by Steve's boss and several other employees. Steve is typing on his phone and then tosses it onto the table in front of him and looks at me. Suddenly, my phone goes off. A few heads turn our way as I pick it up. The text says, you're so beautiful. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Thank you, I replied, and a few seconds later, Steve's phone goes off as the message goes through. He scoops it up, types something else, 
and tosses his phone on the table again, prompting my phone to go off. This was repeated several times as heads followed our actions back and forth like spectators at a tennis match. After dinner, Steve stands up, announces he has to go to bed and leaves the room. Knowing that I wasn't in any better shape, I decided that I had probably better go to bed too. I had a 6 a.m. flight home the next morning and I knew it wasn't going to be fun. As I sat on the plane waiting for takeoff the next day, I texted Steve to tell him that I had a great time and that we should do it again sometime. But at that time, I didn't think much more of it than that. I lived in Michigan. He lived in Pennsylvania. There was an obvious age difference between us, although I didn't know how much. So I doubted we would see each other again anytime soon. A few days later, I had to get a new phone and lost all my contacts, including the text conversation and the number of that nice guy I spent the day with in Vegas. Life rolled on, as it does, especially during December, when you have two girls in their early teens, between family get-togethers and trying to muddle through my first Christmas as a separated couple with two girls, not to mention being a single woman on New Year's Eve for the first time in 16 years. It was suddenly January before I could even blink. Now I was working for a university at the time, so I was lucky to have three weeks off through the holiday season, but that was over. I was sitting at home on Sunday night, enjoying my last night before I was to return to work the next day when I receive a text from an unknown number. The text says, hope you had a great holiday with your kids. You're such an incredibly upbeat person, Hope all is well. I googled the area code and saw that it was a Pennsylvania number. There was only one person it could be, so I replied. OMG, it is so good to hear from you. I wanted to reach out to you earlier, but I lost your number. It was truly a pleasure meeting you. I had every intention of running off to Key West during my break from work in December and just spending a few days on a beach, but couldn't make it happen. Hope you're well. It was so great to hear from you. Steve replies immediately. When you want to run off to Key West, let me know. I will be your tour guide. You are such a positive person. I can still see that smile. <laughs> I laughed. Yeah, okay, we'll run away together sometime. I typed out, anytime. I would love to get out of here. You let me know what works for you. Instant reply. How about Tuesday? I'm staring at the phone, my face somewhere between a smile and open mouth wonder. He was serious. Before I could answer, he sent another text. He says, don't take that last text as creepy. I'm not a stalker. I'm very respectful and will show you a nice time in the Keys. No strings attached. I just have never had a better afternoon than what I shared with you in Vegas, period. And I'm at home in the Keys. We exchanged several more texts exploring the definition of no strings attached, including one where he emphatically assured me, just friends. I respect you. I barely know you, but I feel like I've known you for years. Okay, I thought. What the hell? It could be fun. I texted my boss to make sure that I could take time off of work, even though we were just coming back, but she told me it was fine. I was way ahead on my work projects and we didn't really get busy for weeks yet. So I replied, okay, I have the time off. How do you want to do this? After a few minutes, he answers. We can meet in Atlanta and fly down from there. My reply, sounds good. I'll see you in Atlanta on Tuesday. This will be epic. I certainly wasn't wrong. You will have to catch the blog post next week to find out what happens next. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button because you are not gonna wanna miss a single video that I have coming your way.